In this lesson, we will learn how to solve absolute value equations. Remember that absolute value represents distance from zero, so the result of absolute value of something is always positive or possibly zero, but never negative. Therefore, the equation absolute value of x equals 2 tells us that x is two steps apart from zero, which means x could be either 2 or negative 2. As on the diagram, a number that is positioned two steps from zero, either to the right or to the left, is either 2 or negative 2. So we just solve the first simple equation with absolute value by interpreting it geometrically on the number line. Let's see how can we do it algebraically without referring to the graph. Generally, to solve an absolute value equation, we consider two cases and we solve them separately. What are these two cases? Well, if we have any expression, unknown expression under absolute value sign, and this absolute value of something is equal to a constant number k, then to resolve this equation, we drop the absolute value and we rewrite this in two cases. Either our expression, as previously just x, is equal to the k, which is the first case, or our expression could be equal to negative k. Also notice that this number k must be non-negative, must be either positive or zero. If it is negative, we'll see from the beginning that such equation will have no solution, because the left-hand side is always non-negative, therefore right-hand side must also be non-negative, otherwise we'll have no solution. So again, to solve this kind of equation, we drop absolute value, but instead we split this equation in two cases. Copy the expression as it is, don't change anything here, and then say it's equal to k, or copy the expression without any change, and it's equal to negative k. From these two possibilities, especially if those expressions are linear, we should expect exactly two solutions. One solution from this branch and one from that branch. So we expect two numbers on the number line being a solution to a linear absolute value equation like this. Let's try some examples. The first one is absolute value of 3x plus 2 equals 14. So to resolve the situation with absolute value, we drop absolute value, but the consequence is we need to rewrite the remaining equation in two cases. The expression under the absolute value 3x plus 2 equals 14 or, and please write this connecting word or, the expression under absolute value 3x plus 2 could be negative, so it could be equal to negative 14. Notice that I refer to the whole expression that it could be positive or negative. It's not about x, it is about 3x plus 2. It could be either 14 or negative 14. Okay, let's solve it. So we subtract the 2 to the other side. We are getting 3x equals 14 minus 2 is 12. Similarly here, after subtracting the 2 to the other side, we have 3x equals negative 14, negative 2 is negative 16. And the second step, we divide both equations by 3 to annihilate the leading coefficient, and we obtain x equals 12 divided by 3 is 4, or x equals negative 16 divided by 3 is negative 16 thirds. It's okay to have a fractional number here. Don't be alerted by it. So the final answer for this question is the solution set for the above equation consists of 4, and negative 16 thirds. Let's see example B. Hmm, this time the absolute value is only around x. We don't have the absolute value of the entire side, just the x. So before we start dropping absolute value, we have to have this absolute value isolated on one side. This is really important to isolate absolute value first before you start rewriting it in two cases. Why? Because the two cases refer only to the 
expression under absolute value, this expression could be positive or negative, not the whole site. Therefore, isolating absolute value would be the safest way of solving such equation. So please remember, isolate absolute value first. Isolate means leave it alone on one side and all other numbers or expressions should go to the other side. So let's move the 1. 3 plus 1 would be 4 on this side. We still copy the 2 and absolute value of x. We didn't drop absolute value of x yet. Now we could divide both sides by 2 and we have our absolute value of x isolated. On the other side we have 4 divided by 2 which is 2. And then apply the same strategy as in the previous example. Drop absolute value by rewriting the above equation in two cases. My x is either 2 or negative 2. So the answer for this question is a set composed of two numbers, negative 2 and 2. Let's see the next example. Here the absolute value is already isolated, so we have easy case. We just drop the absolute value by rewriting in two cases. Either the whole expression under the absolute value equals positive 5 or the same expression, you don't change anything here, is equal to, and you change the sign of this free number 5. So it equals negative 5. And then we solve each equation separately. The first step would be multiplying by 3. So we end up with 3x plus 2 and that 3 goes to the other side into the numerator. So 5 times 3 is 15. Or similarly here, multiply by 3, we get 3x plus 2 equals negative 15. Then subtract 2 from both sides. So we have 3x equals 15 minus 2 is 13. Or 3x equals negative 15 minus 2 is negative 17. Finally, we divide by 3, so the final answer is, in this case, 13 thirds, and in that case, negative 17 thirds. Again, we can state the overall answer. The solution set is negative 17 thirds and 13 thirds. The order in which you list your numbers, it's not really relevant because it's a set of points. It's not an interval, just two points are the solutions to the absolute value equation like that. And the last example on this slide, we have absolute value of something is equal to a negative number. Well, as soon as you notice that this is a negative number and the absolute value is non-negative, is positive or zero, so these two will never be equal. And this kind of explanation is good enough to state the final answer, no solution. So the solution set is empty. Okay, but what if someone didn't notice this fact that we have negative number on one side and non-negative on the other side? What if someone actually applied all these strategies as above to the equation as it is? Well, let's see it. If I will rewrite this in two cases, drop the absolute value and I would say 1 minus x is equal to the same number as it is or 1 minus x is equal to the opposite number than it was, so it's to the 2, and then try to solve it. Well, let's move the x to the right and move the negative 2 to the left of the equation. So it's 1 plus 2, it's 3, or again move the x to the right and move the 2 to the left, so 1 minus 2, negative 1. Well, we've got some numbers that could possibly be our solutions, but are they? What we really need to do is to check. Check if those numbers work for the original equation. If I plug in 3 to the original equation, I have 1 minus 3 equals to negative 2. True or false? 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but we have absolute value. So this is really equal to positive 2. Therefore, it's definitely not the same as negative 2. It doesn't check. Number 3 doesn't check. So number 3 is not a solution. We have to reject it. Let's check x equals negative 1. 
Again, if I plug in negative 1 to the equation, I have absolute value of 1 minus negative 1. Is that equal to negative 2? Let's see. 1 minus negative 1 is 1 plus 1, so it's 2. An absolute value of 2 is still 2, so it's definitely not equal to negative 2. Obviously, it can't be, because as we mentioned before, the left-hand side, the absolute value of something is always positive or possibly zero, but never negative. So it can't be equal to negative two. Therefore, even if we didn't notice this in the beginning, we could still get the final answer. No solution. However, we've done quite a bit of work and it took us some time. So noticing that the right-hand side is negative and the left-hand side will never be negative would save us a lot of work. And this kind of explanation is good enough to state no solution. So I'm going to erase this part. Remember that absolute value can't be negative. Finally, if we want to solve equations with two absolute values involved, equations like this, certain expression in absolute value equals to some other expression in absolute value. We resolve such equations by splitting again into two cases, dropping both absolute values, and then the two cases are left-hand side expression is equal to the right-hand side expression as it is with no change, or the left-hand side expression with no change is equal to opposite to the right-hand side expression. Someone could say, okay, how come if one absolute value produces two cases and we have two absolute values, why don't we have four cases? For example, this expression could be positive or negative and that expression could be positive or negative. Well, let's see. Instead of this word expression, I would just use A and B because it's shorter to write. So if we have something like this equals to absolute value of B, neither A nor B is known. How do we resolve this situation? Well, A could be positive or negative. So to drop this absolute value, I would have to split this into two cases. Either A is equal to absolute value of B or negative A is equal to absolute value of B. But then each of these cases give me two more cases because absolute value of B could be split into either B or negative B. So we have A equals B or A equals negative B. But similarly, the bottom equality could be written as negative A equals B or negative A equals negative B. However, notice that using those four cases is actually the same as considering just two cases. Why? Because this equation is equivalent to that equation. You see, if we multiply this equation by negative one, we obtain exactly A equals B. So out of these two equations, it's enough to consider just the first one because they are equivalent. And similarly, this equation, when multiplied by negative one, it really produces that equation. So instead of considering these two cases, it's enough to consider just that case. So I hope I convinced you that we don't need to consider all four cases. It is enough to solve equations left-hand side equals to right-hand side or left-hand side is equal to opposite to the right-hand side. The only thing that I wish you will pay attention on is we are taking opposite. We are taking negative of the whole expression, not just one part of it. So not to get confused, it's a good idea to use a bracket around the whole expression and place a minus in front of it, and then release the bracket and distribute the minus. Let's see the example. We have exactly this case. Absolute value of something is equal to absolute value of something else. So to drop absolute value, we split this equation into two cases. Either both expressions are equal to each other, or the left-hand side expression as it is, no change here, is equal to opposite and then place a bracket to the right-hand side expression, opposite to 3 minus x over 2. 
and then solve each case separately. So let's think for a second, how can we solve this equation in the easiest way? We do have fractions, so we could multiply the whole equation by 2, but also, hmm, if we notice that here is like half of x, like half of an apple, and over there we have negative half of x, so it's like another half of an apple. So if we bring this negative x half to the left, it will be plus x half. So x half plus another x half is the whole apple, the whole x. Therefore, it's enough to collect x's because the fractional coefficients are really friendly here and that becomes x and then bring the 5 over to the right so it's 3 plus 5 is 8. Instant answer. Here, in order to collect x's, first we need to distribute this minus to the bracket. So we end up with x half minus 5 equals negative 3 plus x half. But then we have exactly the same x half on each side. So they really cancel each other. It's enough to subtract x half from both sides. They are gone. And we end up with something that is never true because in this case, if we, for example, multiply this equation by negative 1, we'll end up with 5 equals 3, which obviously it's never true. So from this branch, we have no solution. However, that branch gives us one solution, x equals 8. Therefore, the overall answer for this particular question is just one number 8.